cars. The astronauts are going to go back to uh, Houston. Uh, now they'll, uh, they're leaving in this convoy and uh, they will arrive in Houston later on today at uh, Ellington Air Force Base where there will be more uh, ceremonies of welcome. And of course, they're gonna stay in Houston for a time and uh, be debriefed and uh, answer all the questions that all the technical experts, well, scientists and others have uh, prepared for them. The first chance they'll have to relax is when they get on that, uh, that Gulfstream II, the shuttle training plane, which has flown so much of the time in preparation for this flight and can take off their shoes, sit back for about uh, three, three and a half hours. Again, they'll be captive with their families uh, I think they'll just uh, really let loose at that time and, and relax and talk about the mission a little bit unofficially and, and for the first time have a chance to think about it. You, uh, you mentioned, Gene, uh, the view from space and how it makes all the problems that we inflict upon one another here on this beautiful Earth uh, seem so, uh, so ridiculous. Gee, uh, you'd like to believe that you don't have to put people uh, in space capsules and send them out into outer space to make us realize that it is kind of one world and that we all have a common bond in protecting not only the environment but the humanity of the people who live on it. I want to go back now to uh, uh, shuttle control in Houston and Hugh Downs for some thoughts on this adventure. Hugh? Yeah, Frank, um, I think what we've seen over these past three days uh, here, uh, first of all, it's the most remarkable series of tests of flying equipment ever made. We've seen compacted into one flight one episode, test flights that would normally be accomplished over months and maybe a couple of years. Uh, we've seen an untried rocket craft with an unusual mix of rocket fuels, both liquid and, uh, and solid, tested successfully. We've seen a massive spacecraft run mostly by computers in orbit for the first time successfully. And now we've seen a huge airplane, a massive glider tested at staggering supersonic speed. And we've seen that landed successfully through the atmosphere. A test pilot's dream, and I think a test pilot's potential nightmare. A flight of real accomplishment of remarkable dimension. And incidentally, Columbia, as an airplane, has broken all world records for speed in air flight. It was said a year ago that the shuttle represented the leading edge of technology, that its systems were advanced almost beyond proving. Well, they have been tested, and now they are fact, accepted technology. This episode in space, this astonishing flight of Columbia, should go a long way in washing away the growing self-doubt in this country about our ability to get things done. Max? You're welcome. Hugh, I can add little to that. I think this has uh, been a very meaningful trip. I notice as we watch the families, the astronauts and their families together, this is the first time that we've had such a rapid reunion of astronauts with families. And there's a kind of symbolism there, I think, for the country in what we achieved on this day. Only enough time remaining for me to express uh, my, my gratitude and my thanks to uh, Jules Bergman, to Gene Cernan, the commander of Apollo 17, to Max Robinson, to Hugh Downs at the Mission Control in Houston, to Lynn Scher, to uh, Ken Kashiwahara out at Weed Patch, and to uh, Colonel Guy Bluford, who was here with us uh, at Edwards Air Force Base. Let's have another quick look at John Young and his wife, and Bob Crippen and his wife. This is Frank Reynolds from Edwards Air Force Base in California. So long for now.